Hi there, my name is Stijn Niesen of the Royal Veterinary College and director of the Feline Diabetic Remission Clinic. Last time we spoke about the blood glucose curve and how we use it to try to determine how well a diabetic patient is doing and what insulin dose to use. And um, today I wanted to explain a little bit more about some other parameters that we can use to monitor the diabetic patient. Uh, one of these parameters is the fructosamine and you might have heard your vet talking about it um, and it deserves a bit of explanation. Fructosamine is a parameter in the blood which cons uh, consists of two uh, main ingredients. One is albumin which is a protein and the other one is a glucose. There you go. And they combine together to form the fructosamine. So you can imagine that if a diabetic patient is out of control, there is a lot of glucose in the blood that will combine with albumin to form a lot of fructosamine. So fructosamine actually is something we measure in the blood and that represents the average glucose over the past period of time. It's a bit different between dogs and cats. In cats it represents more or less the last two or three weeks whereas in the dog it represents more or less the last three to four weeks so it gives you an average of the glucose values during that period of time. You can almost compare it to looking at your display in your car where it mentions maybe that during the last trip that you had your average speed was about 50 kilometers an hour or miles an hour but it doesn't tell you how fast you went so you still can get a speeding ticket and that's the same with fructosamine. So fructosamine gives you an average but it doesn't mean that your cat or dog was not suffering from hypoglycemia, so a low glucose. So although it helps us, it doesn't give us the detail that the blood glucose curve gives us, which I spoke about the last time as well. The other thing we want to watch out with with fructosamine as well is that our laboratories will give us a reference range for what is normal for a fructosamine and that reference range is normal for normal animals. So if we look at the value of fructosamine in a diabetic pet, we actually expect it to be slightly high, even when the diabetic pet is doing great. When the fructosamine starts to enter the normal range of an animal that actually does not have diabetes, then it might mean indeed that our animal is entering into diabetic remission or that we are overdosing with insulin. So that is something we need to pay attention to and when that happens it is time to look at more detailed evaluation of the blood sugar values and the glucose curve can be helpful in that scenario. I hope that makes sense. Again, another parameter that we can use to look at how well our diabetic pets are doing. Diabetes is a disease that we can treat really well if we have the knowledge to do so. Join me next time on the Feline Diabetic Remission Clinic Facebook site. Thank you very much.